Extinction, she whispers, isn't a question of if, but when. She smiles wryly, inhales humanity's last breath, and then that's it. The story goes on without us. Except, of course, that's not how she dies. That's the Disney version, polished, philosophical, satisfying. We don't know how she'll die, how it ends for all of us. But it's probably messy, and it's probably soon. A hundred years from now, let's say, she's the great-grandchild of someone alive right now. She outlasts all the rest, everyone who fried in the sun, everyone swept away in roaring muddy floodwaters or killed with desperate guns. She survives the plagues, the new pathogens, and the tenacious opportunists that never left us. She survives the fires, the hurricanes, the freezing rain, the hunger, the thirst. She survives the whole cascade of overlapping apocalypses until she doesn't. And then that's it. It's hard to think like a species. For one thing, species die. They do it all the time, especially lately. Thousands per year in climbing, but surely not us. We're special. We're different. We are. Unlike all those other species, we brought this upon ourselves, our hungry rooms full of hungry deal makers, our ticky-tacky houses gobbling up ecologies, our digging and shipping and burning and burning and burning. She doesn't have to die on scorched earth, her final breath a full stop for humanity, but that's up to us. If we change course now, if we really think like a species, we don't have to be at the end of the human story. This can be just the beginning. So hi, I'm Mark Hopkins. I'm a fellow with the Energy Futures Lab, and I'm one of the 40 writers and visual artists contributing to this project, Reimagining Fire, Artists and Writers on the Future of Energy. And what I just shared is an excerpt of my work in progress. Uh, when Evelyn Colleen, the project's curator and one of our fellow fellows, uh, or ambassadors now rather, uh, invited me to participate, my mind went immediately to extinction because when I think about energy transition, I think about extinction. It breaks my heart, honestly, to think about all the suffering, all the loss, and everything that's at stake if we don't act rapidly and radically. And it's that heartbreak that I wanna talk about today. Aristotle said educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. And uh, we've been hearing that in bits and pieces today. Uh, we heard Victor this morning uh, dreaming of a time when making the right climate choices is intuitive, where it takes no thought at all. And that speaks to me to a culture shift, a change in our cultural environment. But that's complex. We also heard Yoakum talk about how numbers are just numbers. And we need to have personal connection to the stakes that are ahead of us. And we do have the numbers. We got the research, the data about climate change, the urgent need for energy transition is all too clear, but often we need to feel in order to act. And we need to feel, yeah, anger and fear and heartbreak, but also love and inspiration and hope. We need the heart as much as the head to shift culture. And as Evelyn, the curator of this project says, the arts are a backdoor to the heart. So that's what prompted this project. Um, Evelyn has done portfolios before. Uh, this is her previous portfolio project called Tidalectics. Uh, she paired marine biologists and printmakers from all around the world to create work about the oceans and the Anthropocene. And very similar to this project, Reimagining Fire, supported by the Energy Futures Lab, works much in the same way with Alberta-based writers and visual artists supported by the experts in this room and the community of fellows, uh, are paired up and we are invited to create work very similar to this, but about energy transition from Alberta perspective. So much as these marine biologists were paired with visual artists, in this project, uh, writers were paired with visual artists and my uh, partner is Jill Ho Yu. Uh, this is a draft of her work that'll appear in the portfolio. And there's a huge range of work 
uh, like I said, 40 artists and writers. I'm writing about extinction, but there are pieces about soil, about cling wrap, uh, about indigenous stewardship, about hard-nosed no oil workers going to work in nuclear power, and like so much more. And hopefully in this project, there's gonna be something in there that everyone will be able to identify with, and maybe even more so something that'll make them a little uncomfortable, or say, hey, I never thought about it like that. And uh, hopefully that can, along with all the wonderful initiatives we've heard about today, can start to help to move the needle a little bit on this cultural shift. And on that note, I'm gonna share just a few more of the pieces that are going to appear. You're the first audience to see them. Uh, they are drafts. So I invite you to just take them in and pay attention to what thoughts or feelings they spark in you. There's a poem paired with this image. The poem is by Alice Major, and I will read it to you. It's called, Sometimes You Have to Dig for Hope. Here on the planet's crust, so close to the desperate cold of space, we looked for warmth and rummaged in the chest of wonders we'd been gifted. We learned to burn, crackle and spark of wood, its cooling ash. We let things out from underground. They looked like hope at first, coal's black gleam, the shine of oil, its flare and freedoms, only to find we'd let loose ills and demons in faint wisps of carbon gas that joined the air, tipped it towards disaster. Now we huddle together, try to tuck some of that CO2 away, back into the planet's rocky chest like children trying to conceal the mess they've made. It's hard to hope that this will be enough. Still, deep in the giant jar of Earth is all the warmth we'd need, welling upward from the planet's core, its molten mantle. We could dig down, again, with careful fingers, to let that heat creep up from rock, to spin our turbines and exchange our feckless combustions for steady energy, stored hope. Reimagining Energy, the portfolio, and the book will both be published in April 2023. Please buy the book. Please buy it from independent booksellers, not from Amazon. Uh, and if you want to exhibit the portfolio uh, at your workplace or share it with your communities, you can get in touch with Evelyn. And I believe the EFL will also have a copy of the portfolio project. A few years ago, the EFL had the wacky idea to invite artists into the fellowship, which is how Evelyn and I joined up. Uh, this community gave Evelyn the spark and the confidence to launch this ambitious project and the networks to connect artists with energy system experts and the credibility to hand, help land a book deal, which I have to tell you is kind of a big deal. And hopefully as the book and the portfolio make their way into schools and galleries and offices and homes, they'll do just a little bit of that work to get hearts and minds believing that the energy transition we so desperately need is possible and that they can do something about it. And with this example in mind, I also invite all of you uh, to think about how you can tell your stories differently, what it might look like to have artists reflect on your new technologies or policies or networks, like Yasmin did so beautifully today with that animated video. The challenge we're facing is huge. The stakes couldn't be any higher, and it's going to take all of us, our engineers, artists, teachers, bankers, everyone, to break out of our destructive status quo and make the changes we need. And this room knows better than most, change is possible, but it's not inevitable. So let's keep going, and let's do it together. Thank you.